what are the scientific findings about alcohol um, and drug use in, in regards to addiction and brain? Yeah, thanks, Anya. That, that's a great question and a huge answer, I would say. <laughs> Um, but part of what we want to do um, in this presentation is to link um, people to some resources they can go to, um, you know, online. Um, and one I would point out is the Australian and Drug, uh, sorry, the Alcohol and Drug Foundation website, which has a lot of fact sheets about different drugs and how they impact the brain and the body and withdrawal and, you know, including alcohol as well, because we think of alcohol as a drug. It's a chemical, it acts in your brain and body the same way as, you know, any chemical does, any drug does. Um, but basically, so all alcohol and drugs affect the brain and the nervous system, as well as major body systems. So um, if you have too much, too often, it will do damage. There's no doubt about that. And the scientific findings and the med medical findings are very clear on that. We know a lot more about it these days. And, um, you know, if I take alcohol in particular, because alcohol by far is the biggest problem substance in Australian community, okay? And a lot of the um, medical health harms, road accidents, family violence, um, other forms of violence, um, you know, family breakdown, you know, alcohol is the drug that's most present um, when you look at the statistics. Um, it's not always present for those things, but if we're looking at alcohol and drugs, you know, it is the one that's most common. And, um, you know, part of that is because alcohol is so easily accessible and legal and, you know, reasonably cheap for some forms of alcohol. So, um, but, and what we know about alcohol is that it, it um, damages tissue. It's, it is a toxin. If you have too much, it will damage tissues in the body and in particular, the brain, the heart and the liver. So um, when you're a young person and your body is strong and your health is relatively good, um, your body can repair and, you know, detox the alcohol, flush it out fairly efficiently. Um, so young people might have, you know, a number of binge drinking sessions and kind of recover quite okay, um, but others won't, you know, and, but as you get older, um, the capacity for the body to repair the damage gets less and less over time. So often we see the chronic diseases of heart disease, liver disease, showing up for people you know, in their 30s, 40s and 50s, if they've been drinking on a regular basis. Um, so, you know, that's, um, that's part of the medical science um, that people would, should get familiar with. And I guess, you know, it, it is a big topic, but it doesn't have to be complicated. And just going and doing a bit of reading or, you know, Ronan and I in Diverse Pathways, we love to provide um, education for the community and we've already worked in the African communities and we want to continue doing that and we can um, you know adapt the information for people's language level English level and so on um, but we're very passionate about um, people having education because when you have education you have um, you know what you need good information to make good decisions um, for yourself and for your family um, so the other thing I would say is that, um, you know, people often start out with alcohol, drugs, not intending to get addicted, you know, it might be recreational use, um, particularly, you know, in our young people, um, and sometimes people are using those substances and start to use regularly or daily because they are trying to cope and deal with underlying mental health issues. Um, so I was, I was interested about this idea um, in, the, in the Sudanese communities about if you, you know, a regular drinker, if you've got a problem with alcohol, you're crazy. And we would not use that word crazy, but um, we would ask a person we're working with, 
Have you felt depressed? Um, did you have some traumatic experiences back in Africa or in your journey coming here to Australia um, that make you more anxious, that mean you can't sleep at night and so on? That's called trauma. Um, so often people in this community, you know, have those experiences and have those underlying mental health issues and use substances as a way of coping and getting through each day. Um, and yeah, there's all kinds of other factors that come in for, for Sudanese community as well, but that's just one I wanted to point to. Um, so, so yeah, we're going to um, put in the link to um, the um, Alcohol and Drug Foundation website because anyone who may be, you know, a mother who knows nothing about drugs other than alcohol, she can go to that website and read a very simple info sheet that says, it has photos too, this is what the drug looks like, um, and these are, this is what it is. Um, we usually talk about drugs in three categories, which are stimulants, depressants, and hallucinogens. Um, stimulants speed up um, the brain and the nervous system. So, you know, things like um, ice, methamphetamine, coffee is a stimulant that most of us enjoy every day. In small amounts, it's not a problem. But if you were drinking 10 cups of coffee a day, you'd probably be really wired, you know. So, um, that's an example of a stimulant. Depressants are alcohol, cannabis, these sorts of substances that slow your thinking down, relax the mind and body. And a lot of people, you know, would use those sometimes to get to sleep and so on, or to relax if they're very stressed. Um, and then hallucinogens are drugs that alter your perception. Um, and where things like um, LSD or magic mushrooms, um, you know, cannabis also has a hallucinogen effect, um, which means you can um, imagine things that aren't there, have vivid dreams or um, visions, um, you know, and, and that's the hallucinogen effect. So those are the three categories um, that we put all sort of substances in one of those three categories. Um, and people can read a lot more about this and we'd love to come out and, and work with any group who wants to receive some education. Um, is there anything you would add, Ronan, to that? Um, no, no, look, yeah, no. Um, what are scientific findings, alcohol? Well, look, if you wanted to be very specific about alcohol, you know, um, if a person drinks problematically for a period of time, um, they can acquire a brain injury. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a ter term alcohol related brain, you know, acquired brain injury. Um, and that comes from somewhere, you know, seven to 10 years of drinking, um, large amounts, but, and there are other, uh, of course, other health risks, but those in particular, there, there can be brain damage. Um, and there's, I've, I can never remember, of course, cost disease and all, all these diseases, all to do with the brain, um, degenerating from the use, long term use of alcohol. Yeah. So, um, I just want to say um, thanks, um, Susan, for, for the, you know, for the insight. Um, you, you really shared um, really valuable information that, that are very relevant um, to our community. And, and I'm also hopeful as well, as you also added to Ronan, that, you know, the community would also learn, you know, a few more from, from this dialogue that we're having. And I just want to add that some of the things you both mentioned, and especially Susan, uh, in regard to brain and alcohol and, and other effects of alcohol as well um, for individual is that within our culture or in our tradition, we never associate um, someone, you know, consuming alcohol as, as someone having a disease. We just think it's just a personal choice or they're just being rebellious or they're just being irresponsible. We never associate it as something to do with disease. Um, until they, they become really chronic and you know they have some mental health issues and then again they get a different label as crazy but no one ever make two association together that someone who's consuming alcohol um is is the fact that they have addiction 
that is you know that is considered as a disease of the brain and and we don't we don't really associate that often and um so I thank you both for for highlighting those um information and for anyone listening here and, and for the other members of the community as well um to take you know take good information from here and, and apply those or or to those who are using you know alcohol and other drugs and not judge them you know in in any different way but the fact that you know addiction itself is a disease so um, thank you for that, Susan, and thank you, um, Ronan, for, sorry, for the If I could add, bring in something just then. Look, I can't be sure it, of the exact um, figure, but, you know, it, it's over 80%, I would say a lot more, over 85% of problematic drug use in clients have an associated underlying mental health issue. There's a reason you push the drug. There's a reason you get psychologically addicted or physically addicted to drug. There's a reason for that to use problematically. And we find a vast majority of people with problems already have existing underlying mental health issues. Depression, anxiety are the common ones. Sadness and grief. Um, you know, people, do problematic behaviors for a reason it just doesn't come out of the blue there's a there's a reason behind the the behavior the action yeah 